Welcome to finding derivatives using the limit definition. Now finding derivatives using the limit definition is not the most popular way of finding derivatives. We will be using derivative formulas that are much easier very soon, but this is something that we have to experience to fully appreciate the shortcuts of the formulas. The goal of this video will be to find the derivative of a function using the limit definition, find the value of the derivative at a given point, and find the equation of a tangent line at a given point. Given f of x equals x squared plus 1, find the derivative of f of x using the limit definition. Then find the value of the derivative at the point negative 1, 2. So we first need to set up our limit. So we'll have the limit as delta x approaches 0. Now f of x plus delta x will end up being x plus delta x squared plus 1 minus f of x, which will be x squared plus 1. These parentheses are important. All divided by delta x. Okay, so let's expand this and simplify. x plus delta x squared would give us x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared. And then we have plus 1 minus x squared minus 1 divided by delta x. Now this looks messy, but a lot of it will simplify. Notice we have x squared here, minus x squared. Here we have plus 1, there we have minus 1. So this simplifies into 2x delta x plus delta x squared divided by delta x. Now again, we can't just do direct substitution, otherwise we'd have an undefined value. We'd have 0 in the denominator. However, there is a common factor of delta x in the numerator, which we can factor out. If we factor out the delta x, you can see the numerator and denominator have a common factor of delta x. So our final limit would just be the limit as delta x approaches 0 of 2x plus delta x. Delta x is approaching 0, therefore our limit would just be equal to 2x. So what we have found is a derivative of f of x is equal to 2x. So if we want to know the value of the derivative at the point negative 1, 2, we need to evaluate the derivative at the x value of negative 1, which is equal to negative 2. This would be the slope of the tangent line at the point negative 1, 2. Let's verify this with a graph. Here's our function, and here's our tangent line. And what we're saying from our work is that the slope of this line is equal to negative 2. And you can see if I start here, the point of tangency, negative 1, 2, if I go down 2, right 1, of course, uh, that point is also on the line. That verifies our work is correct. One other thing we might want to do at this point is take a look at the graph of the derivative function as well. Here's our function f of x. Again, here's our tangent line. The green graph is the graph of our derivative. The values of the derivative would give us the slopes of the tangent lines. So for example, at this point where x equals negative 1, we said our derivative was equal to negative 2, the slope of the tangent line, down to right 1. Notice on the green graph, the y value here is negative 2 another way to verify our work. Let's take a look at another. Given f of x is equal to the square root of x, find f prime of x using the limit definition, find the value derivative at the point 1, 1. First, we need to set up our limit. So we'd have the limit as delta x approaches 0 of, now f of x plus delta x will be the square root of x plus delta x. Minus f of x will be the square root of x divided by delta x. On this limit, again, if we were to try to do direct substitution, we'd end up with a zero in the denominator, so that's not going to work. So what we're going to do now is rationalize the numerator by multiplying by the conjugate of the numerator. So we'd multiply both the numerator and denominator by the square root of x plus delta x plus the square root of x. Now we need to multiply this numerator together and simplify. In the numerator, the square root of x plus delta x times the square root of x plus delta x would just be x plus delta x. So what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply this times this, and then this times this. But now these are conjugates, so the next two products will be opposites. So the square root of x plus delta x times the positive square root of x, and then we have the negative square root of x times the square root of x plus delta x. Those are our opposites. So those would combine to give us 0, and then we have a negative square root of x times a positive square root of x, which would just give us minus x. And then in our denominator, 
Remember, we're not going to multiply this together. We're going to leave it in factored form. So in the denominator, we would have delta x times the square root of x plus delta x plus the square root of x. Let's simplify. Notice we have an x and then a minus x, which would leave us with delta x over the same denominator. And notice again we have a common factor of delta x. So simplifying again would leave us with the limit of one over the square root of x plus delta x plus the square root of x. Delta x is approaching zero, so what we'd end up with is one over the square root of x plus the square root of x, which is equal to one over two square root x. Therefore our derivative is equal to one over two times the square root of x. So if we want to know the value of the derivative at the point one, one, we need to divide with the derivative at x equals one, which of course is equal to one half. This should be the slope of our tangent line at the point one, one. Let's verify this graphically. So here's our function, here's our tangent line. Our point was one, one, and you can see the slope of the red line up one over two. Uh, we have the correct tangent line. We might again want to take a moment and take a look at the graph of the derivative. So again, here's our tangent line, here's our function, here's our derivative function. The y values of the derivative function should give us the slopes of the tangent lines at the corresponding x values. By looking at the green function, our derivative function, we can see that when x is equal to one, the y value looks like it's one half, which again is the same as the slope of the tangent line at that corresponding x value. Okay, let's take a look at one more. Given the function f of x is equal to one over x, find the equation of the tangent line at the point 0 0.5 comma two using the limit definition. Let's set up our derivative. So f of x plus delta x will be one over x plus delta x minus one over x all divided by delta x. Again, we're not allowed to do direct substitution. We'd have a zero in the denominator. So in this case, what we're gonna do is multiply the numerator and denominator by the LCD of the numerator. So we're gonna multiply both the top and the bottom by x times x plus delta x. You might wanna think of this numerator as being over one and that might help us multiply these two numerators together. Let's go ahead and try it. When we multiply these first two together, notice how we have an x plus delta x on top, x plus delta x on the bottom. Those are gonna simplify out, so the result would just be x minus, on the second product, notice there's an x on the top and x on the bottom. Those would simplify, so we would have minus x plus delta x. Again, we're gonna leave the denominator in factored form so we're gonna have a delta x times x times x plus delta x. Simplifying, here we have an x minus an x. We'd have a negative delta x all over the same denominator. The problem delta x simplifies out as before. This would leave a negative one over x times x plus delta x. However, delta x is approaching zero, so you can see we'd have a negative one in the numerator, and then we'd have x squared in the denominator. This is our derivative function. So if we want to know the equation of the tangent line, first we need to find the slope of the tangent line. So we need to evaluate the derivative at um, 0 0.5. I'm going to write that as 1 half. So we need to find 1, I'm oh, sorry, there's a negative here. Negative 1 divided by 1 half squared. Well, of course, 1 half squared is 1 fourth. So one, negative one divided by negative one fourth would be times four. That would give us a slope of negative four. Okay, so we have the point of 0 0.52 and we have a slope of negative four. Let's go ahead and find the equation of that tangent line now. Using point slope form, we would have y minus two is equal to negative four times x minus 0 0.5. Remember, this is coming from point slope form of a line. Simplify this and we should have our equation of our line. Adding two to both sides, we have y equal to negative four x plus four. Okay, let's go ahead and verify this as well. So in blue, we have our function and in red, we have our tangent line at the point 0.52. Here's our point of tangency. And we said our y-intercept was positive four our slope was negative four, so if I go down four, right one, you can see we're still on the line. That verifies our work is correct. Again, let's take a look at the graph of the derivative function. The derivative function is graphed in green. We can see that when x is one half, 
the, the y value is negative 4, again verifying that we do have the correct slope as well as the correct derivative. I should mention the following alternative limit form of the derivative is useful if you just need to find the value of a derivative at a given value x equals c. However, if you have f prime of x, you can find the value of the derivative at any defined x value you wish. If you want to, you can go back and give this formula a try. Thank you for watching.